Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Wireshark released a new major update and with that we got some cool features. The new protocol layout feature that displays layouts inside header diagrams is nice. Had actually a little bit issues with it, didn't look quite ready yet in my experience here on my Mac. But on the other hand, uh, Wireshark also resolved an issue that often surprised people new to Wireshark and T-Shark. It's something actually that I just uh, demonstrated this week in SEC 503 here in our class. And that's if you are filtering for an IP header field, for example, for an IP address, the filter is applied to the actual IP header, but it's also also applied to the IP header embedded in ICMP error messages. This is actually a cool feature if you, for example, try to link up uh, ICMP error messages with the corresponding packet that caused the error, but it can also cause some uh, confusion. So the latest version of Wireshark, Wireshark 4.0.0, does have the ability by adding a pound one or pound two to the filter to distinguish between the actual IP header and the IP header embedded in an ICMP error message. And a quick update on the Fortinet vulnerability. Well, make sure you patch soon. The Horizon 3 attack team, which has a history of uh, publishing exploits and uh, lots of, of technical details about vulnerabilities, so certainly a credible source. They announced that uh, they have an exploit for the vulnerability and that they will publish a blog post about this exploit later in the week. Based on a screenshot, it looks like the exploit they developed will actually add an SH key to an authorized keys file and then allow the attacker to just SSH to the firewall. In our honeypots, we also interestingly are seeing sort of an increase of exploit attempts for an older vulnerability, CVE 2018 13379. Uh, this is an older directory traversal of vulnerability in FortiGate and it actually affected uh, the uh, VPN uh, web portal. The VPN web portal is not affected by the new vulnerability, so I doubt that they're looking for this vulnerability, but uh, they could be sort of building target lists using basically an older attack tool that they have because the response may give away that first of all, you are hitting a 40 gate a firewall. Maybe they can even deduct things like a version number or so. So this may be the reason why they're scanning currently the internet with this older vulnerability. And Trellix in a new blog post has a write up with details regarding recent bizarre call activity. Uh, you may have seen the related emails. I've you should receive like one or two a day uh, that sort of match that pattern. It's always an invoice that claims you bought something. It often actually says that you already paid it. And then there is an 800 number or some phone number on the invoice. The trick here is that they're trying to get you to call that number. And this blog post goes into quite a bit of detail what different techniques and sort of personalities uh, they're using then in order to convince you to install a backdoor on your system. Well, uh, it probably helps that the name of the backdoor appears to be names like supportclient.exe. They do use some of the data in that invoice uh, then to basically establish some trust with you. Real nice uh, blog post I find to sort of look into some of these more sort of social engineering uh, techniques that are used these days. And of course, something like this is always a uh, great material for an awareness presentation. And researchers at the Fraunhofer Institute for Secure Information Technology and other institutions presented a joint paper at the Boston Usenix conference uh, in August outlining some possible attacks against RPKI. RPKI is a protocol that's used to secure the border gateway protocol BGP. And of course, the problem here they're trying to solve is that uh, we have all of these different uh, BGP hijacking attacks and RPKI 
KI can be used to then basically authenticate the data and uh, make these attacks pretty much impossible if RPKI works as advertised. Now, the problem that's being pointed out in this paper is in order to actually verify the data, you need the respective keys. And there are some key distribution points uh, where you can download uh, those keys in order to verify the data. The problem is if these key distribution points are not reachable, then it basically falls back to the unprotected version of BGP. So all an attacker has to do is essentially launch a denial of service attack against these key distribution points, which is in some cases made easier than it should be by just uh, adding some rate limits uh, to the requests. So an attacker could easily just exhaust those rate limits and with that prevent valid requests from actually being answered. Certainly a valid, interesting vulnerability, but the real problem is that the majority of networks don't implement RPKI at all these days. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.